Hello everyone, welcome to RDLP. I'm Solon, and we are playing Assault Android Cactus today. I am so excited to share this game with you. This is a Witch Beam game that is in pre-alpha right now. You can get the demo on Steam, and I highly recommend you do. You can also uh, buy it, I think it's $15 on Steam, to get early access uh, and all sorts of goodies that come with it. So, uh, yeah, this is Assault Android Cactus, and... It is basically a class-based, top-down, twin-stick shooter, which means that we have a variety of characters. There are five right now. Uh, it'll be eight when it comes out. And each one of them has a different primary and secondary way of uh, firing, as, as top-down shooters are wanting to do. And so we can pick from anyone. I'll just grab Holly here. And a wide variety of levels. Uh, there are some that are still uh, worked on, so I cannot uh, choose some of these. But we have about uh, ten core, two entire worlds that are finished, and then uh, a variety of in-progress levels, and they're all very, very cool. So let's just jump in and show you what's the haps in this game. So in Assault Android Cactus, you play as one of five uh, androids that are trying to kind of maneuver the mysteries of this... I think it's a crash-landed ship? Uh, and we're trying to keep the peace, basically. All of the robots have gone a little haywire, and so it's our job to uh, fix that. So, Holly, uh, specifically, is a character that her uh, shots lock on to whatever they uh, start hitting. And so it makes it very easy to do kind of fancy things like chaining your combos together and uh, maneuvering around a level while uh, finding power-ups and stuff like that. And then she can also use her secondary ability, this giant cannonball, which is basically like in Gauntlet, you have the, the BFG. And it's exactly like that, except more pirate themed. I can make these robots walk the plank. And so, that is uh, that is basically what we are doing. This is like a kind of very arena-focused, uh, one level at a time, score attack sort of game where you're trying to chain combos together and complete a level as fast as possible without uh, without getting killed, without dying, without um, running out of battery. You have the the battery meter at the very top in green, where if I get hit too many times, uh, I don't die. I can tap the fire button to get up and get back into it because Holly's a no-nonsense chick and doesn't care about anything, especially walked down by some pff, measly bullets. But if I get knocked down too many times, it's going to take some time to get up, which means that I won't be able to get to batteries in time. And so these batteries pop out of enemies after about 20 or so enemies. And so the game is about killing uh, robots as quickly as possible. And so there's three different kinds of power-ups. you got uh, auto turrets, you've got this accelerate bonus that lets you fly around the map faster, but also brings these little... Uh, nuts or cogs or kind of small tiny pickups towards you and those help you power up your weapon. On the top left you can see there's a health bar but just underneath the health bar there's a little tiny uh, white bar that you can fill up and it increases the power of your weapon uh, and so each character has I think four levels before max level and each of them feel very very powerful uh, you kind of start out a little measly pea shooter weapon, but then as the level progresses, it expands massively.
to the point to where you're like mowing through enemies with just your primary weapon and you start to forget, oh, I have a cannonball I can also use. So I have just been absolutely in love with this game. And there's been so many uh, amazing things that I've just been kind of thinking about with how this game works at a, at a more critical level. Uh, obviously you, you can see that it takes a lot from uh, the old school top-down shooters your kind of smash TV sort of stuff uh, but it does a little differently and I think that one of the most important things about it is actually its primary contemporary that it's working off of is actually Jet Force Gemini which is an old N64 game that wasn't a huge hit but was still something that was really, really cool and powerful. And that makes me really think about how the game making spectrum, uh, especially at the indie level, but even more than that, uh, even at a broader sense, is actually now taking its cues from the N64 era, which is amazing. Uh, when you think about it, the N64 came out 18 years ago which means that it's at that it's at that new pinnacle where uh, media kind of has a, a two decade running thing before certain trends become nostalgic so we had the 90s which means everything's uh, in music is becoming more folksy now uh, to kind of reflect the the grunge or pop folk that was missed 20 years ago and so now you're seeing that now now, with Assault Android Cactus, uh, we're seeing things that look exactly like things like Jet Force Gemini, uh, and other other contemporaries, I guess, would be kind of like, uh, I made a game with zombies in it, where it's this tightly coded uh, experience in a very just nice and happy package, focused entirely on what feels good, which is an interesting thing. Uh, Everything about this game feels super snappy. And and it's kind of interesting that's that's a f development focus. It's not uh, like having fun, but what feels good. And so what feels good to people that grew up uh, in the early 2000s <laughs> happened to be Jet Force Gemini. Anyway, so I think that's a really cool thing, and I think that we're going to get a lot of games that are in that kind of golden eye, uh, perfect dark feeling of like, alright, this is what feels good, this is what I want to see in games, and uh, maybe we can get some more kind of, uh, when the GameCube games start rolling out, <laughs> the GameCube inspired games, we can get some Cubivore, we can get some Pikmin. Completely different kind of game, but <laughs> it's just kind of funny to expand uh, on what were those quirky and beautiful N64 games that were so exciting. Anyway, you've been seeing me get ranks and kill a bunch of enemies, uh, and they were all super different and very interesting, but uh, I feel like I haven't shown you uh, other kinds of androids, so... Let's play as Coral as we continue on, and we are going to go into fighting our first boss. Everyone meet Embryo. Embryo's a sexy cat. He knows how to get down on Friday nights. Rats, sneaky, filthy rats scurrying around my hold. Ah, Coral, is it? What are you doing down here? Don't you have a, a Pilates class to teach? Yeah, that's kickboxing, bruh. Nobody shows up for class when robots take over the ship, though, so I've got some free time. You look like a bit of a punching bag. You have no idea who you're messing with, Half Pint. This won't even count as a warm-up for me. So this is the first boss. Bosses come in uh, different waves, so you have to defeat each different part of the uh, 
robots, so we've got like what, six waves or so. And it's kind of beautiful, the things that Assault Android Cactus does with their boss fights. Oh, come your battery. There we go. There's a huge range of uh, risk and reward styled uh, design choices where it's like, alright, oh, I went down. Uh, you can get close or far away from the enemy, uh, and depending on what you do, you can either succeed or fail in different ways, so... Oh no! Here's the, the very last phase. Has this, uh, like, huge bullet hell kind of section. Whereas the, uh, and it kind of puts together the, the all the other phases combined. Where we had, uh, he was firing lots of bullets, he was firing rockets. Uh, sometimes he was firing in these intersecting, weaving lines that contained us. And now, on top of everything, he's also moving around. So I'm gonna be kind of cheeky and kill him with my shield. <laughs> so, <laughs> if he knocks us down, uh... I can just keep doing damage with my shield. And that concludes your complimentary first lesson. Somehow, I don't think you'll be a regular. How did you get so strong? Water can flow or it can crash. Look it up. Coral's kind of the boss. But, uh, yeah, I want to just do that one more time because I want to show you uh, a little closer what's going on with each of these phases. Uh, each boss and each level really is a dance and when you're first starting out uh, trying to fight all of these bosses, all of these monsters, all of these uh, different robots and their different classes you're trying to figure out which what is the right way to do it and it's like you are being led in this dance but then as you figure out how to better manipulate the uh, enemy, you actually start to lead the dance. There's little uh, mechanics like the battery as being one specific thing. Uh, the battery always pops out of the backside of the robot uh, once you've defeated its phase. I'm just gonna take you down right now. How do you like that one? That was cool. <laughs> he did like it. He's like, no big deal. Uh, but the battery always pops out of the backside, so you can control where you're shooting the uh, opponent from in order to choose where you want the battery to come out of. Uh, especially with someone like Coral, whose secondary fire is a reflective shield. It does damage, but it also reflects bullets. You get to be the, the Lord of the Dance in this case, or the, the Baroness even. And so as you learn the dance and figure out how to best survive it... <laughs> didn't get any chain. Uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Uh, <laughs> uh, as you learn the dance, you, you become like a master of the dance. And it's very, very cool. <laughs>